The verse continues, feeling, cognition, formation, and consciousness disappear also. They too are empty, non-existent. As well as the six faculties and six objects together with six consciousnesses, the six perceptual faculties are the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. Sight, sounds, smells, taste, objects of touch, and dramas are the six objects of perception. They appear as the, the complement of the six faculties. In Chinese, the word Jen root is used for the six perceptual faculties, conveying the idea of growth, while the word Chen dust is used for the six objects of perception, conveying the idea of defining or defilement. Between the six faculties and the six objects are produced discriminations which are called the six consciousnesses. The eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, tongue consciousness, body consciousness, and mind consciousness. Those six consciousnesses, the six perceptual faculties, and the six objects of perception are together called the 18 fields. With three minds in three seasons, three closures are passed through. The three minds and other minds of past, present, and future. The mind of the past must cease, and the mind of the present and future must cease as well. Because you don't want to have three minds and three seasons, it is said, the mind of the past cannot be obtained, the mind of the present cannot be obtained, and the mind of the future cannot be obtained. None of the three minds can be obtained. Three closures are passed through. If one is capable of not having the mind of the past arise, and not having the mind of the present be produced, and of not having the mind of the future come into being, then one, then one does not think of good or of evil. When the three minds do not exist, how can one think of good or evil? When, through your vigorous cultivation, you reach the state of taking Diana Joy as food and you are filled with Dharma bliss, then by sitting quietly and properly, you can open your first middle and top closures. The first closure is called the closure of the tail. The middle one is called the closure of the spine, and the top one is a is called either the jet pillow closure or the old door of birth and death. The first and second closures are easy to break through. When you reach the third closure, you enter a bit of difficulty. What kind of situation do you encounter after you pass through the third closure and still continue to cultivate? Then, what do you experience? The great cart of the white ox turns with the sound lean, the sound lean, lean. The wonderful Dharma Lotus Flower Sutra calls the Buddha Vihago the great cart of the white ox. There is only the Buddha Vihago, there are no other Vihagos. After you have realized Buddhahood, but not before, you can go along the road in this great carriage. In other words, we work hard to be able to turn the Dharma wheel to teach and transform living beings. Why does the wonderful Dharma Lotus Flower Sutra call it the great cart of the white ops and not the great cart of the black or the yellow ops or the great many colored ops? The whiteness of the ops represents the non defilement of our own nature. Thus, when you practice, the great Vihaiko Dharma turns with the sound of Lin Lin. As it goes along on the road, this great Vihaiko the carriage of the white ox makes the sound lean lean. The sound a cart makes going along a road. At that point in the cultivation of the way, everyone experiences a certain feeling. You feel like you are drunk, like you are asleep, you are asleep, and also like you are dreaming. In the last analysis, you don't know whether it is true or false, empty or real. Your four limbs are especially soft. Your hands and legs feel like soft mud. They have no strength and don't want to do anything at all. But when you sit, or perhaps when you are not meditating, your heart constantly thumps. It's not your heart that's thumping, but your spleen. 
when you are walking along and feel boom 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 you presume it's your heart thumping but it's the spleen when you run fast the spleen has to work a little harder so it thumps and hits your stomach and it your stomach in digesting therefore the verse speaks next of a little yellow face child who jumps and thumps in agitation who is the yellow face child he simply the thoughts in your mind the seat of the mind is the spleen which is yellow so it is called the little yellow faced child it jumps back and forth and when that happens to people when they meditate they think to themselves oh my heart is really pounding a lot maybe i have a heart trouble and they become afraid but they haven't contracted heart trouble so there's no need to be afraid This condition is a result of cultivating the way your heart also feels like it is pounding when you are afraid, like a rabbit jumping up and down or thumping. When the, the great cart of the white ops turns the dharma wheel, the thoughts in the mind thump, thump, thump ferociously, just as when you are afraid. But it is only a little yellow-faced child jumping and thumping in agitation. What instructive meaning is there in this? If you were to ask what this is about, what kind of principle of the way it is, what its purpose and intent is, the front double three and the back double three meet. The front and in back, there are three places. In front and in back, there are three places. At that time, the roads of birth and death meet before each had taken its own road. Birth went down the road of birth, and death went down the road of death. The road of birth and the road of death were not the same. Now, birth and death are one. Birth is birth. Birth is death, and death is birth. It is the same as form does not differ from emptiness. Emptiness does not differ from form. Form itself is emptiness. Emptiness itself is form. That is to say, Birth and death are non-dual, or in other words, there is no birth and no death. But you must work hard. If you don't work hard, if you go forward one step and retreat four steps, it is still of no use. Unless, unless you don't want to cultivate, you should go forward and make progress every day. You should be vigorous. As soon as you retreat, the work you have done before is wasted. It is lost. Then, if you still wish to return to the original source, you must start over from the beginning. So, in cultivating, you can only go vigorously forward. You cannot retreat. Guan, uh, closure. Chinese Guan, closure or gate. The quotation is from the analogies chapter of the wonderful Dharma Lotus Flower Sutra in which the Buddha presents the parable of a man, a great power whose huge mansion catches fire. His children, intent upon their games, will not leave the dwelling. The man lures them, lures them out of the burning house by telling them that outside are three kinds of character for them to play with. One goat drawn, the one deer drawn, and one ox drawn. But when the children escape to safety, each is given the same kind of carriage, magnificent beyond his widest dreams, and drawn by a great white ox. Thus, the Buddha uses expanding vehicles to build living beings to the real doctrine that of the one vehicle drama. And according to Chinese cosmology, the color yellow represents the earth too. The earth is controlled by the spleen, P, which is the seat of the mind, Yi. Chinese medicine teaches that the function of the spleen is to beat or thump on the stomach in order to aid digestion, thus the analogy. The Twelve Conditioned Causes Sutra and No Ignorance or Ending of Ignorance up to and including no old age and death or ending of old age and death. 
commentary, this passage mentions the 12 conditioned causes, Brati, Tiasa, Mutbada, which those of the condition enlightened vehicle, Brati, Kabuddhas, cultivate. The 12 conditioned causes help people be born and die and be reborn again. The condition enlightened cultivate the 12 dharmas of conditioned cause and understanding the principles of human life. They become enlightened and are certified as having attained the fruition of Pratika Buddhahood. They are called those of the middle vehicle, hearers, shravakas, others more vehicle. Pratika Buddhas are the middle vehicle, and the Bodhisattvas are the great vehicle. What is ignorance? Ignorance is a lack of understanding. In everyday language, it is called being mixed up. It means that you have not understood the principle. Because you are so mixed up and you do not understand, your behavior is mixed up. Your actions are false. By false activity, is meant doing what you shouldn't do. The false activity leads to empty and false recognition, that is consciousness. Mixed up name and form follow. Then there are mixed up entrances. The six entrances come into being from mixed up entrances. There arises mixed up contact. When there is mixed up contact, one thinks of mixed up enjoyment. From such mixed up feeling comes mixed up love that is craving from mixed up love there then arises mixed up seeking and grasping which is followed by mixed up having that is existence to have is to obtain from mixed up having one can then obtain future birth and from rebirth comes old age and death these are the 12 conditioned causes and they all begin with being mixed up because they are mixed up in the beginning, they are mixed up at the conclusion. You pass through one mixed up life to the next, and that next life is also mixed up. The 12 conditioned causes are all mixed up, and mixed up conditioned causes are exactly what ordinary people are unable to understand. From the very beginning, the 12 conditioned causes are mixed up. The desires that people give rise to whether for food or for sex, are all produced from ignorance, the first of the conditioned causes. Ignorance is just another name for being mixed up. When thoughts arise, there follows a desire to act, to go and to do it, the second of the conditioned causes. In this way, the twelve conditioned causes explain the principles of how we are born and how we die. Because there is ignorance, there is sexual behavior. The mixed up sexual behavior is produced from the state of being mixed up. When the mixed up behavior exists, there, are, there arises a mixed up recognition, a mixed up discrimination of consciousness, the third conditioned cause. This is the body of the intermediate skanda consciousness, Antarabhava. When a man and woman indulge in sexual behavior, if an intermediate skanda consciousness has an appropriate interpersonal causal co connection with that mother and father, then even if it is a thousand or ten thousand miles away, and even if only the tiniest thread of light is emitted, it sees the light and goes there to become a fetus. When the fetus, fetus comes into being, there is name and form, the fourth condition cause. Name refers to the four skandhas of feeling, cognition, formation, and consciousness. Why form refers to the form skandha, four kinds of awareness, feeling, cognition, formation, and consciousness exist in the mother's belly in name only. They have not yet actually come into being. Once name and form come to exist, there are then six entrances, the fifth conditioned cause. These are six perceptual faculties and they give rise to see to the seeing nature, the hearing nature, the smelling nature, the tasting nature, the touching nature, and the knowing nature. Those six natures are called the six entrances. Once the six entrances exist, the child becomes aware of contact, the sixth conditioned cause. 
Therefore, it is said, the six entrances lead to contact. Having awareness of contact, the child becomes receptive to feelings, the seventh conditioned cause, and that from that the eighth love is produced in the heart. Only after love is born does the child wish to seek and grasp. This is a ninth conditioned cause. Therefore, love leads to grasping, seeking and grasping for what one loves. Thereupon, one wants to have, to get for himself, uh, to get for oneself. This is the tenth conditioned cause. Because of thinking and getting, there is rebirth in the next life. After rebirth comes old age and death, the twelfth and last conditioned cause. If there were no ignorance, there would be no activity. This is the extinguishing cycle of the twelve conditioned causes. When ignorance is ended, activity is ended. When activity is ended, consciousness is ended. When consciousness is ended, name and form are ended. When name and form are ended, the six entrances are ended. When the six entrances are ended, contact is ended. When contact is ended, then enjoyment, that is feeling, is ended. When enjoyment is ended, love is ended. Then when love is ended, grasping is ended. When grasping is ended, having is also ended. When having is ended, birth, old age, and death are ended. Thus, no ending of ignorance. Its basic nature is empty. False activity, discrimination, followed by name and form, the six entrances, contact, feeling, love, grasping, having, rebirth, and old age, and death are each that way too. For 10,000 miles, the sky is clear, without a cloud or a shadow. Still water fills a deep pool and reveals the light of the moon, like people who drink when thirsty and know the hot from the cold. Talking about food and helping it grow, the work is always wanting. Commentary, no ending of ignorance, its basic nature is empty, that is, ignorance does not exist. False activity, discrimination, followed by name and form. The verse says that after discrimination comes name and form. After name and form come the six entrances. After the six entrances, contact. After contact, enjoyment. Enjoyment, then love. Love, then grasping. Grasping, then having. From having come rebirth and old age and death. Therefore, the verse says the six entrances. Contact, feeling, love, grasping, having, rebirth, and old age and death are each that way too. They are all connected together in the twelve conditioned causes. When the time comes that they all do not exist, it is like a cloudless sky. For ten thousand miles the sky is clear, without a cloud or a shadow. Still water fills a deep pool and reveals the light of the moon. It is also like the bright moon appearing as a reflection in clear water. Like people who drink when thirsty and know the heart from the cold, having the spiritual skill, the Kung Fu, of knowing and being enlightened to the twelve dramas of conditioned cause is compared to drinking water. Because when you are thirsty and drink, you yourself know whether the water is cold or warm. Talking about food and helping it grow, the work is always wanting. If you yourself don't actually cultivate, if you don't work into the trap conditioned causes and become enlightened to them and say, Oh, the trap conditioned causes are empty, empty, empty. If you haven't done these things but you talk endlessly about emptiness without having genuinely obtained its real meaning and principle for yourself, then it is a case of merely talking about food but not eating it. As it says in the Sura Gamma Sutra, in the end, talking about food cannot make you full. Having it grow refers to the extremely stupid people of the country of Song in ancient China in those days. When you wanted to refer to a country where the people were stupid, you said like people of Song. Since they were the stupidest, how just how stupid were they? Among the men of song, 
there was someone who felt sorry for his plants and pulled them up. He was worried that the grain he had planted wouldn't grow. So saying, Ah, my seedlings are growing so slowly, he pulled them up to help them grow. He pulled them up so they were one or two inches taller and said, You see, they grew two inches today. Having arrived in a dark hurry, he was muddled and confused and had the appearance of great weariness. He arrived home panting and exclaimed, too much bitter suffering, too much bitter suffering. And he said to his family, Today I am very tired. Today I feel so tired that I am sick. Because I do so much work, I have the plants to grow. His son went running to see him. His son said, Ah, my father has such great ability, so much divine psychic power, that he can help the plants grow. Heaven and earth help the plants grow, but the amount they help in any one day is infinitesimal. What mantra did he recite to help the plants grow? And he ran off to the fields to look. As of the plants, they had withered. They all dried up. They were dead. This is just to say that in cultivating the way, you should not think, Ah, I have become enlightened. I have become enlightened. I have become enlightened. Or, ah, how is it that I have still not become enlightened? How should I be so that I will get enlightened? This way I don't get enlightened, and that way I don't get enlightened. I go forward several steps and haven't been enlightened yet. I retreat several steps and have not been enlightened either. I jump several jumps and don't get enlightened. I sat for one whole hour and still have not become enlightened. After all, how do you get enlightened? If you have a mind like that, you will never be able to become enlightened. Why? Because in your mind, your thoughts of wanting to become enlightened press down on your potential for enlightenment in much the same way as a man from Song who had his explanation of the meaning of the 18th of the text plans to grow. Therefore, the verse says, talking about food and helping things grow, the work is always wanting. In short, there is never any merit in it. You yourself must cultivate with energy and with a level mind. You must put your feet down diligently on the actual ground. You should not say, will I be able to get enlightened tomorrow? Will I be able to get enlightened the day after? When will I be able to become enlightened? Don't cherish such thoughts because the false thinking mind is precisely what will cause your enlightenment to run away in fright. Your enlightenment is afraid of, is afraid of false thinking. So when you have false thinking, enlightenment just runs away. Why does your heart jump? Because it is afraid of your false thinking. It is also afraid of becoming enlightened. Since you want to become enlightened, your heart jumps and thumps. Incredible, he wants to become enlightened. So when your heart starts pounding, your comic obstacles become afraid and imperceptibly think, if he becomes enlightened, what will we do? There won't be anything they can do.